So going into it, how the team makeup is going to be a little bit different this time. So there is, I would say, an equal amount of range for the clowns as there were the first game. Um, obviously, Slavs are bringing in a lot more melee this time around. A few kind of uh, few bits of cavalry as well as not the best map for cavalry. I know you can get some dirty cav rushes over the last point, but only when you're properly set up for it. I think Reapers would be a better shout personally on this one, but it is good to see there is barely any range now on the Slavs team. I thought that would hurt them in the first map, and I did. Um, and it doesn't look like the clowns are going to be making that same mistake, which is good. So obviously in terms of stream delay and everything, there wasn't any the first match, which I, unfortunately nobody told me. But all the teams had picked the units and everything beforehand anyway, so that's had no impact on anything. Um, it would have just been a case of people would have been able to see where people were. That was it. But we're going straight back into it, and we are going to have a good match. So... I previously said it, I don't know if it was during my stream delay, so you may not have heard it, but if the clowns win this match, then they will be scoring themselves three points. Uh, if, they, if the Slavs win this one, then both teams will get one point for this week. But clowns defending, defending is always easier. Every map is biased more towards the defenders than it is the attackers. So Slavs are really gonna have to work hard for this one. I think they've got a good chance if they can work together, if they can kind of use their cohesion together as a team and really kind of make sure everybody is doing what they need to be doing. I think they've got a chance, but Clowns are definitely not a easy team to kind of get hold of, as Amya has just shown with his first kill already, that they are going to be a difficult team to break. So a couple of Clowns have actually fallen down here. That may catch them out. I don't know how they have managed to do that. That's a bit of a cock-up on their part. Slavs this time. Uh, obviously the blue and clowns are the red slabs this time have 300 extra units on top of what the clowns have so that is a massive amount of units more that's a huge amount of units more there's a couple of oh gosh what are they doing here are they actually chasing that kill outside is that going to catch them out? Have them all seen it bumming? Oh, you boys don't want to die again. Cause surely any boys had died in the first match. So you don't want to be getting caught out here, boys. And it looks like they may have been. They have been a little bit greedy. Temple looks like he may have just jumped down there to try and save them. Um, this is... I don't really know what has been kind of said about here. This is a little bit of a weird play. It's three, four on four. Everybody seems to be getting away unless this musket can actually kill someone on the ladder. Don't look like that's going to happen though. Bit of a melee there. It's not really bought any kind of advantage for the Slavs though, other than getting those two siege towers landed, which looks like they're running back to resupply now to get units to actually start going up those siege towers. Kicker Dunkel sitting right at the back there just with a good overview of everything. He looks like he's coming down to the front lines now. Uh, looks like the sea shells are now starting to get used to actually push up, but clowns have a very big stack up on the walls. Um, it looks like they're going to hold it for a little while. They haven't got any units up on the walls, just the heroes, but the heroes do a decent job of holding the walls, to be honest. So again, I can only apologise for not having a delay in the first match. Uh, I thought I was everything was set up perfectly, apparently not. Uh, however, looks like we've got the camera wall working a lot better this week, which is nice. So Slavs have rotated around massively here. They have rotated massively and they are going for a big supply push here. Clowns have seen it. Clowns are going back. Amy's going back to Suero. They're all jumping down. They've seen it. Couple of people putting a little bit of pressure on B to try and keep a few of the clowns back over there, but there's a massive supply push. Now this is quite a nasty kind of bottleneck. Um, it's really difficult to get units down and through here. The flamers are eating 
these guys up because they all have to go through a certain point that the flamers can just literally put their flames on that point and it's going to do a massive amount of damage here um, I would personally be getting all of these units down I wouldn't be even worried about having a unit here to protect the pack I'd be getting all those units down because I want to be clearing all of those clowns but the clowns are really holding them hard here really holding them hard So the unit on A, ready, B looks like it is, it is slowly starting to get taken. Um, although that guy has just left his uh, left his oppo, which is uh, a little bit mean. They have been pushed back on the supply point over here though as well. That, that was a massive zerg by the slabs and that has just been stopped cold, dead, hard by the clowns. A couple of traps have been used now as well. I don't think any have had any massive kind of impact. Slavs have lost almost 400 troops. Clans have lost 200. So the numbers are starting to come into line a little bit. Uh, B looks like it is going to go to the Slav. Slavs are going to be able to take that now. Yeah, problems with pushing down small stairs like that, like I said, they are very, very small kind of bottlenecks because everything has to go through that central point. So it's easy for things like flames and stuff to stop it. A little bit better on these stairs because they're a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, but still it's exactly the same problem on most stairs. Slavs cheekily already have someone up on C and that is Mr. General Combo himself so that is already pulling people back away but they are defending A, they are defending the supply point very careful on the supply point though because it is trebable so if people leave their troops there which I don't think the clans will but if they do then it is a very trebable spot Combo here is he going to get away or his pants must be turning a shade of brown right now with those dudes chasing him. I think Amya, is that Amya? Or was that six? Yeah, they've got him. Yeah, Combo's pants have literally just turned a brown. So it looks like these guys are actually playing a bit of a blinder here. They're getting a few into the base already and they're getting a few down onto C. Now, if they can get into the base and actually shut off these gates, then the clowns are going to have a fucking nightmare trying to get back into this base. Um, I personally think too many have gone to sea. I would be getting all of these boys in here. All of them in, all of them in, all of them in. Shut the gates. Do not let clowns back in. You may have a few spawn behind you, but they would be easy enough to kind of sort out and tidy up. Um, as long as these boys here can get C, that's what it's dependent on here. This is a very good tactic if they can get C. If they can't get C, then it stops the whole push anyway. So that's quite an interesting way to play this map, actually, is from B, don't rush down this way, but actually rush along here and get ready set up in the base. But it looks like clans have actually stopped the C push, so it may not work for the Slavs, unfortunately. We've still got six minutes, Slavs have still got a little bit of time. So it's not like they're really, really pressed for time. They have got time to set back up, get all the uh, units ready, heroes ready and everything like that. Um, they've still got a couple kind of behind enemy lines here. I'm trying to sneak a little cap on C and just keeping a few people away. If Slavs can get stacked up here and just smash through into A, then they may still have a chance with this but they're going to have to start thinking and doing as much as they can as quickly as they can they are stacked on a look clowns so Slavs is going to be really tough for these boys to kind of push through. Um, I don't think a straight up charge is going to be the thing to do. I know they've got a lot of cav out. 
but I don't think it's going to be the best of plays to just straight up charge on through. But we shall see what happens. I have been wrong in the past. Um, they've got a lot of heavy kind of units here though, ready. But again, it is a very small bottleneck right there that everything has to pass through. Um, they are making a little bit of a headway, but I don't think it's going to be enough. There's a load of palace guys gone running in there. And they are just pushing, pushing, pushing as hard as they can. A few clans are dropping. So if they can keep these numbers dropping, they may have a chance here. So there's nine heroes alive to their 11. But they need to get those units through. And they need to get them through quick. So we've got some 40s coming through. I think I saw a unit of IPGs there as well, but they're all walking straight into the Imperial Shields there. And then a bit of ranged are just bartering them up as they're kind of charging on through. I think they have been pushed back. They are getting pushed back here. Yeah, so are clowns going to take advantage of this? Are they going to really push them back here now? Or are they going to reset? I think the amount of heroes alive now on the Slavs team, they are going to probably just push out and keep them busy outside. Although there is a cheeky cap going on, but Java is already there. He's seen it. He's stopping it. When teams do push out like this, there is a chance of getting back capped. Um, but it looks like they've got a couple of boys up there anyway to kind of stop that. Um, them taking the supplies, the Temple's seen it, Sue's seen it. If they take the uh, they're not going to have time anyway. I was going to say, if they take the supply, they may have a bit of a chance to kind of spawn some stuff and hit stuff in the butt. But it's, uh, I think it might be a little bit, a little bit too late. They're all very well spread over here. There's no real kind of concentrated attack. There's a few boys coming in through B side here, but they're just getting met so quickly by the clown's rotation. Clown's rotation is by far one of the best in the game. They can rotate round and stop attacks so quickly from different angles that it is unreal. It just goes to show the discipline, the organization as well between the teams. It's very very good a lot of these boys are very experienced players tournament players as well and it goes to show just how much that experience really does help out in games such as this they aren't regular sieges there's a lot of stuff you got to take into account that you don't have to in normal sieges and there's just a unit of looks like palace guards kind of stopping the gap over here at sea but uh, where rose possibly going to come up and sort this out now Wiro himself, I know, is a very good player. Um, he is just going to keep interrupting that cap, and I'm sure more people are going to come and join him to help. Yeah, this is this is it. This is make or break time. Hello, Tix. This is make or break time now. They've really got to get something going but I don't think the clowns are just going to let them do it. They're pushing back out, they're going to stop any spawners and I think this might be GG's. So in terms of the stream delay again I can only apologise for my absolute fuck up of not having a stream delay on. Unfortunately like I said no one actually told me that there was a stream delay not on which is uh, not ideal but to keep it fair both teams had no stream delay. So both teams casting have had no stream delay whatsoever. So what you are seeing right now is live. This is happening right now. And exactly the same for the first match as well. Bit of a fuck up on my part. I can only apologize for that. However, <sighs> something else I need to be aware of next week and make sure I don't do it again. But at least we got a hang of the camera now because you know, the button I'm using actually freaking works on my keyboard. Fun times. Hello watch. But yeah, I think this is definitely uh, GG's by Team Clown. I do not think, genuinely, I do not think having no stream delay on has affected the game in any way, shape or form for either team. 
if it has then both teams have had similar kind of opportunities to use the stream to their advantage both teams have had no stream delay on whatsoever so both teams have in fairness had the equal opportunities and advantages of seeing a live stream but that's it gg to clown um actually quite a few of them died this time so unlike the first game where only two of them died Few few more deaths this time. Um, a lot more deaths, unfortunately, for Slav. Slav's really good push down to the supply point. Really good push. A really kind of concentrated push. But rushing down so many troops down a very thin bottleneck, such as that staircase, is just usually, unless you're there, very very quick. It is usually not going to work because. You can literally jump on the bottom of that staircase with flamers, with range, with just a shield unit and it will stop that push very, very quickly because they are all having to run through a certain point. I can understand the uh, thoughts behind it. It is a very good kind of idea to try and capture this supply point and then you can kind of back, cha uh, back charge and back cap and all the rest of it. But it was just, it was too many troops going down, too narrow kind of corridor. And